Okay, so let's start talking about hunting and where to go now. This is part two. If you haven't seen part one, go back and check that video. For part two, we're going to talk about how small game can influence big game hunting and how to figure out where to go and how you can use small game hunting to find those locations to be successful in big game hunting. So first, let's go to Google Maps and start with the very basics. So as you guys can see here, I just did a quick Fort Collins area because that's where I'm currently located. I am moving, so I don't mind showing you guys some stuff. But with Fort Collins, as you can see right here on the map, the green areas are going to be areas that are public land or are parks or state land or federal land. You can check out those various locations and zoom into those locations and then see, hey, this is named such and such, and then Google that and see if hunting is allowed there. That is the very basic way you can figure out where to go and if that area is available to be hunting or what the rules are to hunt that land. That is one way to start doing it. Now, if you want to get more advanced and you want to spend a little bit of money, I think it's worth it personally is to look at Onyx Maps. Onyx Maps is such a great tool because it allows you to do a lot of things, but the biggest thing is to make sure you are on public land, state land, BLM land, land that you're supposed to be on, not private land. And it's a great tool because it lets you know exactly where you are, even if you are not connected to you know, cellular signals or Wi-Fi, you can download maps and you can zoom into these various locations, especially if you do a large download for these general areas. As you can see, I've marked up this entire area with areas that I am interested in. And you can see I have all these different symbols with all these different kind of color coordinations. This is how I go about it. So let's zoom in now to one of the locations where I have a lot of markings. In this location, you can see I have markings for water. I have markings for where I'm gonna be camping, where I've seen elk, where I've seen rabbit. You can see that I'm using kind of a color coordinated system as well as icon system. This is what's super useful. You can also click on each one of these and they have little notes or you have little call outs for each one. It's a great tool. You can even see where I kind of located a certain area and kind of made a boundary area where I want to focus maybe a little bit more in this area. That is why Onyx Maps is so useful. It's an incredible tool and I highly recommend using it. Now, if you switch states, you just have to email them, let them know. They will transfer you over to those various states so you can understand what's going on there. And honestly, for 30 bucks a year, it's a very great tool and it's a very useful tool. Now I'm gonna show you the next way to figure out where to go hunting. And this is just using general Google search. So for when I Google how to figure out where to go, I look at areas for small game hunting. I will Google, you know, Fort Collins, trying to do some rabbit hunting or whatever, but I will put Reddit at the end or forum at the end. And that will bring me to people that have already asked these questions. I guarantee that no matter where you are or where you're looking to hunt, someone's already asked this question, probably on a forum or on Reddit. If you Google it, you can probably find it and kind of dig into it a little bit more. Oftentimes there's good information. If you find a forum that is going to be working for you or that has some information, make sure to kind of look through that entire thread and then go up to the search bar area and continue to search, continue to kind of figure out if there's more information that you can just harvest from this forum about that kind of hunting. Oftentimes someone's asked this question, you can figure it out. Now let's tie this into how it can work for big game hunting using small game. Okay, so now you're starting to get ready for some small game. Let's talk about how this mixes with big game. The reason I recommend starting with small game and then why you can use this for big game is learning an area or learning a certain patch of land is going to be very useful to you compared to trying to learn 50 patches of land and trying to outsmart people that have been hunting these areas for a long period of time. So you're better off doing some small game hunting. There's almost no pressure, especially if you're going in like January, February time for like rabbit or, or whatever is available to you. 
there's very few hunters there that are hunting in general. And that allows you also, if you're in an area where there's snow, you can see patterns, you can see where they're moving. It'll give you a sense of what's there and what's moving through there. Now, obviously, depending on what you're trying to hunt and the location, those animals, those large ungulates are gonna move based off the seasons and change their patterns and their locations. That's fine. But it does give you a sense of, are you on the right track? Are there animals here that I wanna hunt? And it helps you become an expert in those locations, which is so critical. I cannot stress that enough. Learning areas and becoming really knowledgeable about them is the biggest key to becoming successful with big game. And small game really allows you to understand these locations, dissect them, walk all through them. And I mean all through them, every little inch and in, in, in nook and cranny that you can find the better that you understand these locations, the better you are going to be as a hunter, especially for big game, because big game gets really smart, really quick. Once the season starts, they know what the game is and they know where to go, where people don't want to go or don't end up hunting. And they've been doing it for a long time. That's how they get big. That's how they get strong. That's how they survive year after year. So what you want to do is understand these landscapes. Now, if you're in the West or if you're in larger states, it's going to be very hard for you to understand every single inch of these areas. And that's where we go into more advanced tactics. Finally, the last thing that you can do if you're looking for places to hunt or trying to figure out where to go hunting, the next thing for you to do is, and this is where it's kind of hit or miss is why it's at the end of the video or the last option is to look at your state's website. I'll show what it'd be like if you were looking for grouse, sage grouse here in Colorado. As you can see, you can go to the internet, just Google this, it'll pop right up. Not all states have this, so especially for small game. So this is a useful tool if you do have this. It will show you a lot of data. One thing it will show you in particular is per county, how the harvest looks and how many people were successful. It'll give you graphs, it'll give you a sense of how many hunters are there. This is all super useful information if you're brand new. Even knowing if people are having success in certain locations can be incredibly useful narrow down you know where you're going to be located or where you're going to be looking and i think this is a great tool to have like i said not all states have this and so that's why i put it at the end because it's not the most reliable tool depending on what state you're hunting in but this will give you a baseline of how i think you should start hunting because now you have a small game tag in your pocket you can walk around these areas, start seeing what's there. And oftentimes, as I'll show you on these videos right here, I'm small game hunting and look what I find. I find I find elk standing around and, and moving around during the winter time. I find mule deer going around and a lot of mule deer sometimes while I'm out hunting. And this is a good sign. Seeing all that level of movement and all that and amount of game there tells me this is worth my time. That tells me there's something there that I should explore. And that is gonna be a key for you while you start getting into hunting. You're gonna have the success of small game. It's gonna teach you about these areas. And then on top of it, it's gonna educate you on moving forward. And when you start trying to have your adventures into big game. So with that, that is part two. Part three, we are gonna talk about gearing up and getting ready to do your first small game hunting tactics you might use uh you know equipment you might want to look at and some other things to research before you go out and start your first hunt so with that said hopefully you enjoyed this if you did make sure to hit the subscribe button and the like button with that said we'll talk to you later thanks